Welcome back for another video. My name is Josh Castic, and today this is my Avengers Endgame spoiler review. So, guys, yes, it is a spoiler review. Um, so I'll give you 10 seconds to leave if you haven't seen Avengers Endgame. Okay? Alright. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000, 6, 1,000, 7, 1,000, 8, 1,000, 9, 1,000, 10, 1,000. Alright guys, that was uh, 10 seconds, or roughly. Um, so, you should have enough time to leave the video. Um... You know, I can't really give you any more time, really. So, uh, you have, and those people who are still here, you have been warned. There are definitely spoilers in here. Alright. So, now, uh, basically, where are we start off? So, for the trailer, you had Tony Stark and Nebula on the, uh, ship, kind of losing stuff that could die, it could die. Well, that's at the beginning of the movie. Like, I mean, like, beginning of the movie. Alright. And so you have him, um, basically they're playing like a game and then they show different sequences of them trying to fix the ship, not working out. And then basically he does a recording for Pepper Potts like in the trailer and then he falls asleep. Then he looks like he kind of died though. I don't know why, but that's what it looked like. And then like, like grabbed him and put him on the seat to look I would just face, but guess who saves him? Dun 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 dun. dun. Captain Marvel. Although I think that was kind of predictable. There could have been several people, several people that could have saved uh, Nebula and Tony Stark. And I think one interesting thing about this uh uh fact is that um basically it it was. I know it was one of those people, it's been guessed already that it would happen, but there's so many people that could have done it, you know, it's so definitely a surprise, although it's not a surprise, it, it's kind of in the middle, like, once you knew it was Captain Marvel, you're like, okay, yeah, you know, um, but, yeah, I mean, could have been literally anyone, I think the fact that it was Captain Marvel wasn't exactly all that surprising, but in the end, because there's so many people, it's kind of in the middle there. Um, so, um, and yeah, so he rescues him. Then you have a, uh, you know, a reunite between Pepper Hutz and Sir Stark and all of the, you know, Rhodes, Captain America, Natasha. Um, you know, uh, Rocket, and all, well, he never met Rocket, but, you, you know, the thing, like, all of them together there, uh, except for Thor, which we, no, yeah, Thor, what am I saying, sorry, uh, my bad, yeah, Thor was also there, I was thinking about a future part in the, uh, be, uh, later on part of the movie, um, uh, so, we basically, um, you know, have a re-night, and then they're talking, Toy Stark gets really mad, basically they put him on fluid, because, you know, he has an A, he looks, literally looks like he had bones and stuff, like, kind of showing, like, he was starving, and he took them out, because he got angry, and then he fainted, um, but, uh, basically, all of them, um, all of them, besides Tony Stark, obviously, and Pepper Potts, um, went to, they, they all of them found where Thanos is with the help of Nebula, and, um, Rocket's ability to see how, the, basically, the Infinity Stones have this, you know, power, right? Well, it basically created a huge energy signature on Earth, and they tracked that energy surge to where else it was. And they found it was on this planet, which we think is Titan, obviously. Um, but, although it's in time, so he basically, whatever he did, I don't know, whatever he did with that, but, um, so that's where they, uh, went to find Thanos, and here's some comedic moments. You know how, uh, but, well, they're basically talking and stuff, uh, but basically, Captain Marvel goes to see if there's any traps or anything. There was nothing, so they go on there, 
to grab Thanos. Now we see Thanos doing this farm, obviously doing the his seeds. He looks kind of wearing like you know farming clothes, not wearing his armor or anything like that. And well, he then um, well basically he gets uh grabbed by uh you know the Avengers, obviously, and. He's trying to fight back, but you could see how it looks like his face and everything is worse. Now, there's a reason for that. He just he used the Infinity Stones to destroy the Infinity Stones. So, um, he could have died, but he did. Um, but for comedic moments, you know how they say, Well, Thor should have gone for the head. Thor should have gone for the arm. Well, guess what they gave you? Both. First, they cut off his arm, and then Thor got really mad near the end after, like, um, Thanos was, like, saying, I'm oh high and mighty here, I, I did my plan. Um, Thor cut off his head. Yeah, cut off his head like that. Boom. Dead. Yep. Oh, so, yeah, everyone's disappointed because they're going to use the stones to, uh, change everything, but he destroyed the stone, so obviously that's not going to work out. But, you know, wait for one second. So, they all go back home. Then, five years later. Five years later, guys. Five years. Pepper Potts and Toy Stark are married. And they have a child. A girl named Morgan. Obviously predictable. Uh, I kind of want to see the wedding. But, you know, I, I said I wanted the wedding near the end and stuff. But... You know, I, I get what they did there. Not bad, no. Uh, I don't see any problems. Oh, wait, the beginning is not Toy Stark. Forgot one second. It's Hawkeye. Obviously, Hawkeye is family. As his family gets snapped. But obviously, for some reason, they don't actually show his family getting snapped. You know what? Because, basically, Hawkeye told his daughter to get the arrow. So he t And then Hawkeye turns around to pick up something. And then when he turns around, his daughter's gone. Poof. We definitely know if snap. We definitely know she was snapped. But they, for some reason, they d didn't want to show us. I I don't know why. I think that's kind of lazy. They could have done it. Whatever. Um, and then he goes to all trying to find his daughter. He sees that his wife and his other his two sons are also gone. His entire family was snapped. Predictable as always. It was. It was predictable. There's no, there's nothing else you can really say about that. That that was predictable. Um, and then he gets mad. And then he cuts. Sorry, that was the beginning. Then it goes to Toy Stark. My bad. That is a really big part. But like I said, I think, um, you know, it's hard to remember. Like it, it, it could have been better. Let's just say they could have at least shown the people actually getting snapped. I mean, it's not like we haven't seen other people get snapped. Okay, okay, all right. Whatever. Um, now, uh, but yeah, basically then they, uh, you know, five years later, Toy Stark has a child. Love that. Awesome. Cool. I really wanted that. Um, cool. You know, uh, I really love that. I wanted, I wa finally wanted that. Yes, I really wanted that. So, uh, I like love stories. I like when they have, a when... They, they, those loves, they get married and then have children. I don't know. I just, I like a good love subplot in a lot of my movie in the movies. I don't know. It's like, you know, you just need that romantic subplot somewhere in a movie. That's all I have to say. I mean, not all movies have that and are still good. I mean, but, you know, good romantic subplots. That's all I have to say. Um, um, and then we have. Well, Officer Nat uh, Natasha, aka Black Widow, is at the Avengers base, and he, she's basically kind of like running the running everything, like waiting for something bad to happen so she can go and help. And there's all other people like Rhodes and all that stuff who are out there helping, and like Rhodes is kind of after Hawk, aka Ronan. Uh, also, I kick uh, Claire Barton, who's basically, like I said, children, is a passed away, so he basically became a murderer. A murderer, basically. Be basically, he's kind of doing the same thing as 
everyone else, like uh, Natalia, all they're doing, like, basically taking out the bad people or trying to take the advantage of people the other half being killed, or I mean wiped out. So, but he's doing it out of anger for his family being killed. So, or being snapped. Yeah. So he's killing people. Uh, eventually, um, and then Captain America at this point is, um, well, he's kind of running, what you call it? Uh, you know, the, the, the therapy circles, you know, where a bunch of people come and they talk about their problems. Um, although, word advice, therapy does not work. It, it, it has done more bad than it has done good. Just saying. Um, we, uh, but, uh, besides that. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Captain America is doing that. And guess where Thor is? Although, there's a, I'm kind of just going out of order this. So it's not a full breakdown. I'm just going out of details and stuff. Thor has become a lazy, fat video game player with war, uh, with um, Wark and um, the other guy's name. Um, basically, yeah. He literally let himself go. I mean, like, literally, he let himself go. I'm not joking. He literally let himself go. Think about a fat Thor. Guys, think about that. Think about that. Fat Thor. How could you do that to Thor? Okay. A fat Thor, guys. That's weird. I don't want to see a fat Thor. Okay? I don't want to see that. Of course, I already did because that's in the movie. Fat Thor. Thor. Fun of the fat. <laughs> I'm joking. All right, all right. Uh, uh, now let's see. Where were we? Oh yeah. Um. Oh yeah, yeah. Um. Then, let's see, Rocket and oh, Rocket basically uh, and, uh, try to uh help him uh get him back because they are coming back. Now, now where Hulk is. Basically, um, Hulk and Bruce Banner are combined. He's basically Professor Hulk, like exactly that. There's really not much to say. I'm going out details, but the reason why it's going on is because Ant Man came back um, five after the five years, but to him it's like more like five hours, and he just real he was like wondering what's going on. People are missing, and then they he sees this big area of st uh, stone tablets with people who vanish and he sees his name because obviously they think he got well vanished but so he tries to find Cassie Lang and he knocks on the door and he she fi uh, he finds Cassie Lang but five years older yeah five years older um and they're really happy to reunite and then he basically uh then goes tries to find uh the Avengers base. Now, basically back to where Natasha is, uh, Captain America, uh, goes there, uh, to talk, and then they re and then, then rings the doorbell, he's there, and they all, uh, they tell uh, ant what was going on and stuff, and, uh, so that's where he, uh, was, um, well, now that's where he is now, so, uh, and that they basically, Ant-Man tells them about the quantum realm and how to time travel and stuff. They basically go to Iron Man, where we finally meet that he has that kid, like I talked about before. And they basically tell him, let's do time travel. Well, Tony Stark says, no, I, I don't want to lose my daughter. No, I don't, I don't want to lose my daughter. No, no, we're not doing that. I'm not going to do something that could very well not be controlled, ruin time, and ruin my um my daughter no absolutely not no basically that's what he says they leave they go to bruce banner and then basically a lot of comedic moments would do the time travel basically set ant-man into time for a week later with bruce guess what he becomes a child and then an old man and then a baby yeah a lot of references to time travel and space, especially the, um, uh, what you call it, um, the 2001 A Space Odyssey. Yeah, that, there's that too. Um, definitely references from that. Um, 
And, uh, yeah, so, you know, never mess with time, people. Especially since no movie, no TV show, or any of the sort can ever follow the rules of time travel correctly. Or they follow half the rules, so they only follow the rules that support their plot. This is the problem. Guys, do not use time travel unless you plan on using all the rules. I am very annoyed with movies like this. I mean, that that's one point I do not like. Because I'm telling you, Endgame is no different. It literally broke several rules of time travel. And time. Okay? The same. Okay? It's a problem, I know, and I don't like it. I understand it's not too big to get over it. I always know that there are people who are going to make these are always going to mess up, always going to do that. And I preferably want to be different So when I'm going to make movies I and TV shows. I, if I'm going to use time travel, I'm going to follow every rule. I don't care if it doesn't fit the plot. I'll make it fit the plot, okay? I mean, if you're smart, if you're supposed to be a good creative mind, understand how to make a story, should you at least know how to make a plot that involves using time travel that has the ability to use all the rules correctly to fit the plot. I think it's just lazy storytelling, okay? Alright, lazy storytelling. Alright, let's 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 move on there. Um, then, um, basically go wrong. It, Toy Stark basically f actually figures out the way to actually do this safely. So, uh, a few minutes ago with Captain America, just that made no sense whatsoever. Like, really? You just brush them off and then do it anyway? That doesn't really make any sense. But whatever. Um, Iron Man, you know, saw his time travel. He goes to the Avengers base. And they all figure out how to do that. They create... These suits that look like Ant-Man. Basically, you have Hawkeye testing out. They don't have a lot of um, the the part of the um, uh, what is it? What are they called? The particles they use Ant-Man to uh, go smaller and bigger and stuff like that. They use that for uh, uh, the time travel purposes, going to the quantum realm. Oh, well, this is funny, because the quantum, it, to be fair, they didn't actually show the quantum realm. I mean, it's not necessarily the quantum realm. It looked more like a portal loop thing you go when you, well, go through a portal. Or light speed or anything, like a hole that teleports you to one spot to the other, really. Um, yeah, so... Not really Quantum Realm-esque. I don't know what that was about. I thought Quantum Realm was supposed to be a really big thing. I guess in a way it is. And that was supposed to be the Quantum Realm. But it, I don't know. It does, let's, just, let's just leave that. It's kind of weird. Basically they have to go back in time to get the Infinity Stones. Um, so here's some sad parts. Alright. You know how the Soul Stone, right? You know you have to sacrifice stuff, right? Yeah. Well, basically, Hawkeye and Natasha go get the Soul Stone. Now, everyone's like thinking, well, Hawkeye should be the one because he's been murdering people. But guess what? They were fighting about that, but who ends up actually dying? Can you guess it? Three, two, one. Have, no? You can't, guys can't have it? Or you have? Write down in the comment section if you did or not. But the answer is Natasha. She gets sacrificed so that Hawkeye gets the stone. Now, there's several reasons I think this is true. Well, for starters, Black Widow can't really have a life. She can't have children. She can't really settle down. Now, why she can't have settled ch children? Well, if you know Black... If you understand Black Widow's story, she's basically the Russia's version of Captain America. And one thing they do to these people is get rid of their, you know, parts to reproduce. Yeah? So, Black Widow can't reproduce. So she can't have children, and therefore, uh, that's one reason why they probably sacrificed her. The other reason is because everyone's kind of emotionally attached to her, I guess, in a certain way, especially Hawkeye, Black Widow in that case, uh, basically. So she kills herself, Hawkeye gets the Soul Stone, 
you know, and then we see, obviously, we uh, get to see Red Skull again, um, obviously, because it's time travel, they go time, so Red Skull hasn't left yet. Um, now, um, let's see, Captain America, Ant-Man, and Iron Man go for the mine, the Tesseract, wait, no, Hulk, my bad, uh, Bruce Banner, Hulk, um, Iron Man, Captain America, Ant-Man go for the time, the, um, uh, in the Mind Stone and the Tez the Space Stone, okay? So, here's, here's some things that went wrong. Well, basically, Doctor Strange didn't exist at this time, five years early, as quoted by the original, um, uh, the, um, the Supreme, uh, I forgot the name, um, already. Uh, basically, but basically, she, she w wouldn't give, uh, she wouldn't, the Wizard Supreme, was that Supreme? I don't know, something like that. She wouldn't give, um, uh, Bruce Banner the stone because it could have dire consequences as well, and stuff, and make new timelines and all that, and dark stuff, and like, well, here's the thing, with the problem, with the thing of time travel, we could come back, we could always come back to this time and put the stone right back where it was. Well, here's the thing, how do you know you're going to survive? Yeah, how do you know you're going to survive? You could die. Yeah, okay. Well, Doctor Strange told me, told us to do this. It told us, it, it, well, no, Doctor Strange gave the stone, time stone to, away. Anyway. Oh. Okay. So then she gives the time stone, to, time stone because Doctor Strange is supposed to be the best of us. So obviously he knows what he's doing because he, he's the best. All right. Okay, here you go. Here's the stone. Goodbye. See ya. Like that. Okay. Alright. Whatever. Sorry, I had to uh, go and stop filming, but... Um... Now, I kind of realized that I was kind of going into a full breakdown. And I really did not want to do a full breakdown. I keep doing that. Um... So, I'm going to go to just saying, like, things I dislike and things I pretty much didn't like. Um... So, overall, like I said, the movie, uh, was really good. Um, when, uh, once they got the stones, uh, Hulk was, uh, the one to do the snap to bring everyone back. Uh, that was definitely interesting. His arm looks interesting. And, overall, Professor Hulk looks, it was really interesting. I don't know if a lot of people liked it. I, I'm kind of indifferent, um... I think I kind of prefer the other Hulk because, you know, it's it's actually like smashing stuff. Where Professor Hulk, like, I mean, you have Bruce Banner's brain and he doesn't want to fight. He doesn't want to do stuff like that. And it's, you know, it's like he has the bronze of Hulk, you know, the strength, but he just doesn't want to use it. And that's kind of the problem I have a little bit with it. But I think that's kind of the problem that other people have with it. Um, but it's all right. Um, like I said, Thor is kind of turned fat. You know, love it or hate it. I'm. It was all right. It was funny. Um, I don't think we needed it, but it was funny. Um, I don't like the fact that they were playing Fortnite, but you know, whatever. Cause whatever. Um, the sacrifice of Black Widow for the Soul Stone. I understand. I get it, but I don't know. I just I don't like it. I wish Black Widow was in the final battle. It. You know, um, it, I kind of wanted all the Avengers to be there, and Black Widow being sacrificed, you know, uh, before that final battle, you know, whatever. Uh, it's like, it, 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 I don't know, she was part of the original Avengers, and it would have been awesome if she was in that final battle, but that's what they decided to go with. Now, the final battle, um, uh, what happened was, is basically, like, the Nebula... Of the future time gets captured by Thanos of the past, and basically the Nebula of the past basically um, uses a uh, basically disguise herself as the future Nebula to uh, go to the future and then help Thanos get out of there, and that's how Thanos the Thanos from the past 
gets into the future or the p present, I guess, and at that technically it's the present, yes. Um, and they uh, battle it out. Now this is also like five years. Um, I don't know if I said that before, but yeah, it's kind of a the time jump. So basically, now all the movies have to take place after twenty twenty three. Uh, so they can no longer take place in the time that they come out. Um, so, you know, uh, give what you will what they they decided to do that way. Unless they're just going to make all the next movies just take place in 2023. And then when it comes to 2024, they'll put it back to having it when it's relatively released. But I doubt it very much. It's kind of weird way of doing it although the movies the way they're set up are kind of weird too and the official timeline is also very very weird so uh, i don't know you got you have to go as you will um there's a lot of con continuities um like i said when i get into this industry i want to stay away from continuity years like i want to look at every possibility every little continuity that could be coming up because that's what I do with uh, Super Smash Bros. Elemental Wars, which you guys could check out. It's really good, um, but um, not 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 the one I created. The one I created with my friend. There's no di there's no like voices. It's just read dialogue. It's really good. Uh, it's pretty much the same amount of minutes of an actual show. Uh, so there's that. Um, so from going on there, but so yeah, it, that's why. I, where was I? Oh yeah, so that takes place. Um, obviously Tony Stark has a, Tony Stark has a child named Morgan. Um, so which is really interesting. I feel like eventually she will become a version of Iron Man. Obviously, um, but that's that's cool. Uh, def definitely happy moment for uh, Iron Man. Uh, but the sad part is that near the end, um. Basically, Iron Man got, basically, Thanos got the glove, but while battling, Iron Man took the stones and put it in his glove, and he basically, kind of, Thanos says, who are you, kind of thing, and then, then, uh, Tony Stark says, I'm Iron Man, and then snaps, and then what happens after that is that all the villains, like, Thanos and his army, yet his army attacked, basically, what happened in the final battle is that, Captain America got hold me in there, which I loved. Oh man, that was cool. Finally, he had holds me in there. Sorry about that. Um, but uh, yeah, so he gets a hold me in there and bows down. So his shield does. Oh, also Iron Man gives him the new a new shield or so. Uh, and then or is it the original shield? I no, I I don't remember. Possibly it's the old shield because whatever it doesn't matter. Um. But yeah, it gives Captain America a new shield, or I mean the shield, and but it gets Thanos breaks it with his um, sword uh, because it's more likely made out of um, Uru metal, which if strong enough probably can break um, Captain America's shield. I mean, obviously we know in the first Avenger when the hammer hit. Uh, when Thor's hammer hit the thing, it just bounced it off and held the energy. But mostly because the hammer isn't sharp. Where basically Thanos' uh, sword is. So, theoretically speaking, uh, it's not the same impact. Um, and if you really want it, Thor kept hitting it over and over again. Even though they probably keep getting pushed back, eventually it will cave into the Uru metal. Uh, definitely a possibility. Um, even Proto, was it Proto? There, there's an, uh, basically, Captain America's shield is originally an antimanium. Basically, it's supposed to be part vibranium, part something, a part, um, it, it's supposed to technically supposed to be a vibra- uh, it's supposed to be an antimanium shield, kind of, with vibranium. Uh, and then, what happened was, um, for the MCU, you can't have antimanium, so not, they had to make it pure vibranium. Uh, but now, basically, by making it pure vibranium, uh, then if, theoretically speaking, um, if 
uh, Wolverine um, wants to join in to the battle, these battles or have like or maybe like a I don't know a practice fight between Captain Falcon and Wolverine once Wolverine joins uh, the MCU he probably could just he use he take his um, the claws and if he goes into a running jab he probably like would break right through the shield uh it's that's because i mantium is actually supposed to be more powerful than vibranium but so there's that um but yeah back the they go to the past they have this big c basically uh dr straight and after captain america uh, thanos brought his army being so mad that's when uh dr straight ultra up, opens up a circle for wakanda and basically back panther um and the uh, two old ladies, I forgot their name, uh, with Black Panther came out. And then, pretty much, uh, you have all the heroes and all the people. Like, you have Juan and an army of uh, magic, uh, whatever they call themselves, um, sorcerers, a bunch of sorcerers. Uh, then you have well, Wakanda army, you have Spider-Man, I mean, all of them. And that was awesome. And then guess what? Captain America said the words. Finally. Finally said the words. Avengers Assemble. I wanted that so bad. Like it's been a long time coming. It needed to happen. And they did it. That was cool. I love that. It was so. Uh, and then overall. The battle again. Also try to keep the gauntlet away from Thanos. I mean, it was crazy, and, um, but, uh, and, uh, eventually, basically, Thanos was losing, and he got mad, so he had his ship started firing down at the planet into Earth, and then guess what? Captain Marvel comes in and destroys his ship. Boom. Out of the sky. Love that. Love you. If you hate Captain Marvel, you like Captain Marvel, you hate the actor... I don't hate the actor. I mean, I don't like what she says. Don't get me wrong. But I don't... I love the character. Like, the character is really good in Captain Marvel. I'm not going to associate Captain Marvel with the actor, okay? I'm not. And you guys could keep doing that. But you kind of waste your time. Because Captain Marvel, that that was beautiful. That was awesome. I mean, like, it, it, it was cool. That's all I have to say about that. Okay, you can argue with me all you want, but you're not going to change my opinion on that, so. Um, let's see. Um, what else was there? Yeah, there was kind of a female scene where all the characters uh, come together, which is kind of unbelievable, but I don't know. I, I don't really care that much. I mean, I guess it's kind of understandable, like, they would do that because the, uh, a lot of people say it's kind of just about female power, but, like, if you really think about it, my think about it, you have all these females, right? They're all friends. And, you know, obviously they try to uh, come together. I mean, I I don't. I if you have any situation like this, I I think they would do that pretty much every time. You know, I it is kind of forced, but you know, if you actually think about it, I mean, do you think that they're the only people that would do that? Like in any situation, like. I would think that females would stand up for each other and come together I, every time. Like, I, I just, you know, uh, but, sorry about that. Um, now, it, so it was a cool scene, but then eventually, Thanos does get the glove. But like I said, Iron Man, in the pro, uh, process, basically grabs the Infinity Stones. But that's, like, basically, Thanos tries to snap and nothing works, and then we see Iron Man... Have the stones coming into his, into his, like Iron Man suit, making like a gauntlet, uh, and then he's like, and then that says, "Who do you think you are?" or something like that. I don't remember word for word. It's similar lines to most other movies, really. Um, and I says, and then Iron Man says, "I'm Iron Man," and snaps. Thanos and his army, um, get snapped. Now this is really funny because I this 
I basically watched this YouTuber called His He How It Should Have Ended, and he basically does kind of animation of movies how he thinks it should have ended. And the Infinity War one, near the end, like Thor and all the guys they are winning, they won, and they're just uh, sitting at the uh, diner as they always with Superman, Batman, and Thor snapped twice, one, two, and. Basically, what happened was is that then all the villains started getting snapped. Just saying, Thanos, pretty much from all, but not just Marvel villains, but like other cultural villains, like the Emperor, Joker, Th and then Thanos, obviously. You had uh, Bowser. I mean, they're all kind of getting snapped. So I kind of find that interesting that that this that's that came out before this and it's kind of the same thing you know uh except for it's not thor and he and didn't get sad twice it was one but it it still kind of feels uh similar to me and it's kind of funny um i uh, one thing I, I think i talked about before but basically another thing i like was um thanos uh having his uh head kind of cut off, his arm cut off and then his head like people are complaining that complaining about that and so they gave you both I think I said that before but you know I'm kind of now going just based on things I like and well that's definitely one thing I did like very much I thought it was pretty funny and there was another point where basically uh was it Rhodey he basically told him why can't we just go to the past grab baby Thanos you know kill him right I thought that was kind of funny because um, it also in the his heat, they, I don't remember, but basically they had a Thanos baby in there, so I thought that was also kind of funny, too, um, reference to that. I mean, I don't think it's a reference to that, it's just a weird coincidence, but, um, all this, both scenes are probably just a weird coincidence, but it could also be not be, but, uh, I don't know, it's kind of weird to take that from his heat, you know, I, th I think they did thought they'd come up with that idea on their own. So, you know, um, let's see what else is there. Uh, oh, yeah. But, unfortunately, guys, Iron Man died from doing that snap. I mean, he was only human. Like, look what it did to uh, Hulk. His arm, his, his arm was, like, all wrecked up. Like, I, I think I knew it was coming... Uh, uh, oh, by the way, before he stabbed, like, basically, before our man took the Infinity Stones, he looked at Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange pointed one, one time way we win this. But, yeah, uh, he dies. I saw this coming. It was very predictable, I kind of obviously, but, um, you know, he was my favorite superhero. And it's not because of the Iron Man movies. I kind of, I like, Iron Man movies are all right, but there's, there's, just some, there's something about them that just doesn't feel like the other Marvel movies. But uh, it's really because I grew up with Iron Man a lot. Like I've watched a lot of Iron Man uh, animated shows, and it, it's um, you know I kinda, like I said I kind of grew up with it. He's human. It's like his suit is definitely a possibility um, in this like world, like. Uh, so, I mean, eventually, anyway, not, not his, uh, nanotech, but definitely his first original suit is definitely possible as technology goes on, um, but, uh, other than that, yeah, I mean, I don't know, he was, he was always been my kind of favorite superhero, and I, I understand why they sacrificed him, he, he's technically the beginning and the end, even though the MC will keep going on in his absence, but, um, you know, he, Started the MCU, and then he won the day for the Avengers. So, um, in the end, I think that's definitely iconic. It this movie is like literally the best. Well, I mean, I still like the first Avengers. Don't get me wrong, uh, it, but it, it is beautiful. I tell you that's for sure. Um, another thing I didn't like is like the whole time travel problems. There's a lot of time travel problems. But okay, well, for stars, Nebula shot her past self. Okay, and she her past self died. She should be dead too. The, the she, the other the she should also be dead. Can anyone explain that? Please, Russo brothers, explain that. Okay, that is not possible. I don't I don't care if you can explain. Oh, it's a multiverse or whatever. No, 
Now I'll get to back why I said multiverse, but no. Just no. I mean, there's a lot of time travel problems, but I think they're no longer problems because Russo Bros explained what Hulk says, that basically by going into the past, it doesn't affect the present because the present has already happened, I guess. I don't know how that works because if you're the past, that means the present is the future or whatever, you know. It, it's weird. Let's just, whatever their reason is, they think it, it makes sense, whatever. But the whole Nebula thing does not. I mean, that's the only, that, that, it, that's bad, okay? I'm sorry, bad. Now, basically, if you go to the past, it doesn't affect the present. But what happens if the past comes to the present? And then they get snapped, and then basically they don't get put back, and then basically certain events can happen. Because literally, like, Thanos did not went for the past to the present. Therefore, Gamora being sacrificed to the Soul Stone, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, I understand that by going to the past, it does affect the present because it already happened. In that case, the present already did happen. So basically, that that stuff can't happen. I get it. I understand that it doesn't make sense because those stuff still happen. So I, I'm I don't know. My brain's hurting. Like it it, it, it just doesn't make sense. I I I, I don't know. And that's that's my upset with it. The time travel really. Um, but uh. Now they had to put the stones back. I oh, don't. No, another problem is Loki. Basically, they said it doesn't affect the present because it already happened, right? So, but then, if that's really the case, why did I have to put the stones back, though? Like, I don't know. It, it's all kind of weird, right? Um, so, it, I don't know. It, it's just weird. It's, I don't know. Like, Loki escaping. Like, that doesn't affect um, uh, any of the movies, I guess, in that way. But then... Again, like, okay, so I guess that's their reasoning. Like, Loki is not a problem anymore, according to the reasoning of the time travel in the movie. Uh, and so, you know, whatever, I guess. Um, it's so weird. Uh, but yeah, Captain America near the end of the movie. Well, basically, they had a funeral for Iron Man. Um, and basically, pretty much everyone was there, uh, including the kid from the third Iron Man movie. Uh, even Nick Fury showed up. And then we had a little beautiful scene between, um, uh, what's his name? Happy. Uh, Happy and, uh, Morgan. Morgan is Iron Man's daughter. Uh, and basically talking about... Are you uh, basically uh, um, happy? Asked her if she wanted something to eat, and she says, "I like a cheeseburger," which is I kind of because Iron Man uh, or Tony Stark like cheeseburgers, and so it, it's it's kind of cool there, right? Um, but yeah, either it's the kid from the third Iron Man that's going to become like the first Iron Man. I mean, Morgan's a little young, and for young Avengers wise. Which I know they're going to be doing. Um, it'd be kind of weird because she's not old enough yet. And uh, basically you have Stature, a.k.a. Uh, Atman's daughter, Cassidy, who's like, who's like teenager-esque. So she's like old enough to be a young Avenger. And basically the comparisons to her, to Morgan, there's a lot of years... And it it's kind of weird because, so, I don't know what they're going to do then unless they're going to make it like a second Young Avengers or eventually make a Young Avengers where she becomes part of the team, but I've, I have no idea. But other than that, um, let's see what else. Oh, yeah. Uh, then we have the end where Captain America has to put all the stones back. Um... Or he, I mean, he doesn't have to, but he he's the one who decides to do it. And you have Hulk there. You had uh, Bucky and uh, Falcon, all of them, uh, saying that and a bit, tell, um, talking stuff. And then Captain America eventually goes into the past to put the stones back. And then they're going to bring them back, but they didn't. 
uh, I mean, Captain America didn't want to because and he basically stayed back in the past uh, and married Carter. I don't know if they're going to have children or not, but the whole problem is that um, I originally thought there was time travel problems because, I mean, Captain America, they found Captain America sitting on a bench waiting for them, and then uh, he's old, obviously, and he gives the shield to uh, Falcon. Now we have Captain Falcon. And I find, um, and the reason why I find this funny is because there's a character in Super Smash Bros., which is technically a Nintendo character from an old game, which they have not made a new game for for some reason. I have no idea why. Um, call, uh, Captain Falcon, so that that's why I kind of find it funny. So, uh, but uh, yeah, and um, so that's definitely uh, interesting. Also, basically, Thor. Uh, goes with the Guardians. Forgot to say that's so cool. Thor's most likely going to be in the third Guardians of the Galaxy movie. But what happened to what happened to Gamora and Nebula? Like that's one thing that they kind of just disappeared through like the battle. Um, after like Gamora beats Star Lord because she's from the past and doesn't know love or anything to Star Lord, you know. But what happened to her and Nebula because they disappeared, and there's no answer for answer for that. Like, it doesn't really make any sense. Obviously, I think Gamora's gonna come back, and obviously they left that to the, uh, Third Guards of the Galaxy. That's kind of the first mission for that. I mean, obviously, uh, but, you know, I wish, uh, that, um, you know, I'm, it's kind of weird there. Like, I don't know why they wouldn't finish that story. I think mean, three, 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 like, it's supposed to be an end game. There's, like, three things that just doesn't feel like an end. Like, for starters, what happened to Nebula and Gamora, they did answer that in the film. And then Loki, like, escaping with the Space Stone, which doesn't... So those are the three things that kind of don't make it feel like an end as as much as they wanted to feel. Like, they didn't have any post credit scenes or anything like that. But yeah, basically, we do get to... Now back to the Captain America, we get to see him dance with Carter. Which really, it's really lovely scene. But originally, I thought there was a lot of time travel problems with that. Because obviously, if he does that, that basically when Captain America comes out of the ice eventually, because that still happened, everyone has to act like he's been in that ice, and not with Carter and Mary and all that stuff. And then for starters, Carter had married someone else and had children, so those, are, those children are gone. Uh, and then, well, maybe in a different timeline. They're probably from a different timeline, because obviously if you change time, it starts another timeline, not destroy the other timeline, that timeline still goes while you're in a different timeline, multiverse things, whatever, um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, you know, that, that's one really does not make any sense, but, uh, and then basically in Captain America Civil War, right, uh, Captain America kisses Carter's niece, but now, by Captain America going back into the past, marrying Carter, now in Civil War he kisses his niece, and his niece should know that, right? Am I wrong? The niece should know that. But it turns out, with the time travel explanation in the movie, and the Russo brothers, uh, that basically... That Captain America, that Captain America saying that bench is actually from a different timeline. Basically, by him going into the past, starts a new timeline, and that basically the whole multiverse now exists because, and that basically the snap opened a opening between the multiverse so that people could just go to this Earth and back and all that type of stuff, and that's that's where uh, if you watch the recent uh, Spider-Man trailer. Basically, Mysterio is from another Earth through the multiverse, okay? So that's their explanation, that Captain America, saying that Benj is not Captain America from this universe, but Captain America from another Earth in the same timeline, because basically he somehow transferred back to give them back the shield. Now, obviously, I don't know if he goes back to his timeline. Who knows? Um, but yeah, basically, by him going back into the past... Marin Carter starts off a new timeline, and not the same timeline, and that basically Captain America, uh, 
after the snap happens, finds a way to come back to give the um, shield uh, the Falcon. It, it's kind of weird, but that that's their explanation. I don't know. If you like it or not, that's for you. I'm... At least it explains it, and I I get it. And as long as I get it, I understand that I'm. I think I'm kind of happy because, you know, I. It's hard when you're making this world. It's hard for me to believe that if there's continuity errors, there's time errors. How is this supposed to feel like a world? I mean, especially with the Hulk actor and Rhodes actor changing. I mean, my explanation is uh, plastic surgery, like. Bruce Banner went through plastic surgery to hide himself more, but it didn't work out because she had still kept an eye on him. And then, basically, Rhodes was in a very bad plate accident, and he needed plastic surgery to uh, make him look like like Don Cheadle. Okay? Alright, there we go. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, overall, love the film. It was beautiful. It was brilliant. And they did... A really good job ending it. Uh, there's some errors I didn't like, but that's overall it was really good, and I hope you guys enjoyed. And thank you. Goodbye.